Mass stoichiometry and percent yield. We're not going to worry about the limiting and excess reactants. We'll take care of those tomorrow. So, mass to mass stoichiometry calculations. This is the final one of the four. It's where everything gets put, put together. And let's do a little review first. Mole to mole was pretty straightforward. You're given a number of moles and you have to convert to the number of moles of the unknown and you use the mole ratio. So mole to mole is simple. All you're doing is multiplying what you know by the mole ratio of what you don't know to what you know and you get the unknown. Mold of mass, a little different. You're starting with number of moles, multiplying by the mole ratio, then you're multiplying by the molar mass of the unknown. And we're going to put these all together. Then, mass to mole. We're starting with a known mass now. Multiplying by the inverse of the molar mass or dividing by the molar mass. I tend to do it in a, frac in a factor label method so you can know what to cancel and cross out. Times the mole ratio gets you to the moles of the unknown. What do all three of these equations have in common? The mole ratio. So you can always find the mole ratio And you can also determine molar masses. So you're always going to be able to find as much stuff as you need to get to down to that one unknown. All right. And basically, what we're doing now is taking this equation, this equation, overlapping them to give us mass to mass. All right? Mass to mole, you're almost there. You just have to add a step. And so that's what we're going to do next. Whoop, oh, it went too far. So here's the steps. What do we always have to do first, Kennedy? And? <laughs> Remember that for a quiz, right? So you're going to write and balance the chemical equation. Number one, determine what you know. All right? This includes finding molar masses of both the known and the unknown. Determine what you're looking for and solve it. And here is the equation. You start with grams of what you know. That's going to be the one with the number. Multiply by the inverse of the molar mass or divide by the molar mass of the known. Multiply by the molar ratio and then by the molar mass of what you're looking for. And you will end up at grams of unknown. We're going to do a couple of examples. One that will be part of your lab, and then we'll do percent yield along with that, and you'll be able to finish up your lab today.
Everybody good on this? Next up is the example. Now, here's where it gets difficult. And so you got to know how to read the problems here. Tin fluoride, tin 2 fluoride is used in toothpaste. A lot of times now it's sodium fluoride. It used to be in the olden days tin fluoride. It's made by the reaction of tin and hydrogen fluoride. All right. Now, here, here's your problem in yellow. How many grams? So that's our unknown when you see how many grams are produced. So we're the tin 2 fluoride is our product from the reaction of hydrogen fluoride with tin. So somebody so our reactants are tin and hydrogen fluoride. So somebody tell me the symbol for tin. SN Hydrogen fluoride, or also known as hydrofluoric acid, HF. Now, we're going to make tin 2 fluoride. How do we make tin 2 fluoride? Anybody want to? Yep. Is it SNF2? It is SNF2. Good job, Kennedy. And what do we got left over? H2. So we wrote the chemical equation, now we have to balance it. It's kind of difficult. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> Two. That's it. <clears throat> now, what do we know? We know we have 30 grams of HF. We know the mole ratio, and we'll write that down when we need to. Can we, or do we, know the molar mass of HF? What is the molar mass in grams per mole of HF? And I heard a number. 20, is he correct? Yes, because what's fluorine way? And hydrogen. Now, here comes the harder one. What's the molar mass of what we're looking for? SNF2. What's the molar mass of SNF2? Well, what's SN way? What do we got? Be loud. 118.7. And what do two fluorines weigh together? Two fluorines. 38, right? So, what's 118 and 0.7 plus 38? 156.7. Is that correct? All right. What don't we know? We don't know grams of SNF2. So we were able to find a lot of stuff to help us solve this problem, even though it's multi step. So, let's go and solve it now. So, I write down what I know. 30 grams of hydrogen fluoride times the inverse molar mass of HF. Because I want to get to moles of HF. 
because I want to get rid of my grams of HF. And we said that HF weighs 20. Now, we want to get to moles of SNF2 from moles of HF because this is our swinging door. It gets, gets us from the hydrogen fluoride side that we know to the tin 2 fluoride side that we don't know. What is the ratio of tin 2 fluoride to HF? Mole ratio of 1 to 2. Get that from the balanced equation. Now we want to end up at grams of SNF2 from moles of SNF2. What do we say the molar mass is of tin 2 fluoride? 156.7. Now, let's simplify this. What units can I cancel? Grams of HF, moles of HF, moles of tin fluoride. Now, let's try and simplify our numbers. I mean, you all have calculators, but sometimes you never know when you might have to do this by hand. How many twos in 30? 15. How many fives in 15 and 20? Three and fives in four. So now you're going to multiply three, three times 156.7 divided by four. Remember, you multiply the tops together, divide by the bottoms. Otherwise, if we didn't simplify it, it'd just be this 30 times 156.7 divided by 20 divided by 2. We just simplified it down. So somebody take 3 times 156.7 divided by 4. 114 point what? 117. 117? Okay. <coughs> What is called five? S N F two. That is your answer. So starting with thirty grams of hydrogen fluoride gas, we can make one hundred and seventeen grams of tin two fluoride. Start with your grams. Divide by the molar mass of what you're starting with. Do your mole ratio, multiply by the molar mass of what you're looking for. Now in the lab, we can't weigh moles, correct? So all your calculations pretty much from now on are going to be mass to mass calculations, which now brings us to percent yield. And this brings us to the first reaction on your lab. We're going to, the last thing they ask you to do is find the percentage yield of your reaction. And percent yields. Fairly straightforward and simple. What you actually created in the lab divided by what you should have created if everything went right times 100. It's probably your simplest calculation in here all year. Now, your reaction number one probably didn't go as planned. You were learning I expect your percent yields to get better as you go through reactions two and three. 
So the first thing we're going to have to do is determine our theoretical yield. What should have happened in the lab on Thursday and Friday? So here we go. Here's reaction number one, correct? Potassium carbonate, K2CO3, reacts with hydrochloric acid, HCl, to form potassium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. We are starting with this. We are looking for how much of this we're going to make. We're starting with potassium carbonate and want to know how much potassium chloride we're going to make. First question, is this balanced? No. It should be fairly straightforward. I need a 2 here, correct? Which doubles my chlorines, and I need a 2 there, and I think we're good to go, correct? You should have balanced this already. Now, how much potassium carbonate were you supposed to start with in your lab? Most of you did a pretty good job of measuring it out. 0.5 grams of what you started with. That's what you know. What we're figuring out now is the amount of what should have gotten if you did the lab perfectly right. If you did the lab right, we're going to calculate how much you should have gotten. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We are looking for grams of KCl if we start with this much potassium carbonate. So here we go. Going to start with 0 0.5 grams of K2CO3. I need to get to moles of K2CO3 and get rid of my grams of K2CO3. Now, we got to figure out what the molar mass of K2CO3 is. So we got potassium, we got carbon, and we got oxygen. How many potassiums do I have? How many? Two. And each one weighs 39. We'll just round it off for our purposes. How many carbons I got? Be loud. How many carbons? One. One. Each weighs 12. And how many oxygens? Times 16. So 39 times 2 is 78. 12 times 1 and 3 times 16, 48. Somebody add them all up. 138. Everybody agree? All right, grams per mole. So we go back, put it in here. Now we've got to get through the door. So we're going to moles of KCl. That's what we're looking for. Oops, shouldn't have done that. Come on, there we go from moles of K2CO3. What's the mole ratio between these two? Two to one. And then finally, we're getting to, why is that doing that? Stop. Uh, we're getting to grams of KCl from a mole of KCl. Now, what does KCl weigh? Three. 
How many chlor ca or ca uh, potassiums do we have? Times 39. How many chlorines? Times 35 and a half. And that gives us, what, 74 and a half? That sound right? All right. Can we cancel any units out? Can we cancel units? Tell me what units. Units, units. Can we get rid of this one? With this one? This one? With this one? This one, this one, which now leaves us with grams of KCl. So 0.5 times 2 times 74.5 divided by 138. Does somebody do that? 0 0.53 or 4, which is it? Which how you round? 4. four? So that's what you should have gotten if you did the experiment right. If you did reaction one totally perfectly right, you should have got 0.54 grams of potassium chloride if you started with the 0.5. Now, when you do these calculations, you're going to do them for however much you started with. So, everybody good or can we move on? Because we're going to do the percent yield now. So, here we go. We should have gotten, let me change pin colors. We should have gotten 0 0.54 grams. What did you... Anybody that started with 0.5 grams of potassium carbonate, what'd you get? What'd you, what'd you actually get? Oh, I got 0.6. So you got 0 0.6. Very good. That was better than the last class. So 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.54 times 100. What'd you get? What's point? What'd you get? Did you multiply by 100? 100 and what? 11? 111 percent. You just created matter. In the lab, you should be 100 percent or less. Your goal is always 100 percent. So there was some error introduced when you got 0.6. Somehow, either something didn't get totally reacted, there was an impurity, scales were wrong, something happened that you got 111%. Your goal is always 100%. So you're 11% over where you should have been. Now, what I said to the other class, this was reaction one. This is where you were kind of making sure you knew how to do the experiment. Reactions two and three should be better, hopefully. So what I want you to do now is take out your lab and do all your calculations and we'll see where you're at.